Hello, brothers and sisters of Christ. Praise the Lord. Have some uh, prayer update. Let's see if I can do it the right direction. Uh, the smoke is gone. Praise the Lord. I don't even know if I can do that, but I don't think I can. Uh, but off in the distance, I got to see actual clouds today. Not smoke, but clouds today. I can see the ocean. And... Uh, it's a beautiful day, praise the Lord. So thank you all the brethren that have been praying for the smoke and everything up here. Now the winds can change. Absolutely the winds can change and bring the smoke back. So, but I want to do a little walk and talk thanking the brethren and giving God glory for, you know, clean. <laughs> birds are out this morning, my chickens are out. Um, Everything's just, just a wonderful day today. I thank the Lord so much. And thank you, Brother and Sister Christ, for praying for me. Um, I wanted to do this walk and talk to talk about uh, something I was hoping I wouldn't really have to really talk about too much. But I guess we're going to have to a little bit. Um, anyway, I uh, opened up uh, a talk on the forums at King James Video Ministries, uh, .org, I think it is. Um, and what it is is basically so people can ask me questions right, about my ex-wife. And the reason I did that is because she's coming out with tons of videos. She's making lots of accusations, brothers and sisters in Christ. And they're serious accusations. I mean, if you didn't know me and didn't know this ministry, I'd take those accusations seriously. I would. Um, but I, the Bible says that before two or three witnesses, let every word be established. Before two or three witnesses, let every word be established. I've got to keep my eyes out because they said that there's been a cougar about. So, kind of keeping my eyes out. Um, I think someone got them. Um, so we're, we're fine now. It's very rare to get a mountain lion or cougar up here. Um, but it happens. Uh, mainly, we get bears uh, at night. Not during the day, but at night. Um... But no, I, I did open up a forum so you can ask. I don't know everything that she's been claiming. I don't. I know some things because I've had brethren email me, brothers and sisters in Christ email me, and I've had uh, brethren uh, Skype me saying, wait, I've been hearing this or I've been hearing that. What's really going on? And they start talking to me and I can talk to them freely. But people, brothers and sisters in Christ, if you're wondering why I haven't come out, Trying to get Victoria to follow us. <laughs> Victoria! Why I haven't come out with videos refuting her, refuting her. Because it's he said, she said. Okay, it's a lot of he said, she said. Um, Bible talks about backbiting. Um, you know, uh, getting into debates. You know, I have, I just so you know, brother and sister Christ, I hold no anger towards her. Okay, no spite. No bitterness, no nothing. My heartfelt desire is that someday that she will come to the knowledge that she is a false convert like I did at one time in my life, that I was a false convert, and that she will truly come to God and biblical repentance as it applies to salvation and believe in the finished work of Jesus Christ on the cross and get saved. There's Victoria back there. That's, that's my heartfelt desire for her at this point. Um, but, uh, yeah, um, so I, I opened up the, it's a question and answer on the forum, so you can ask a question, and I'll be honest with you, just, you know, ask the question, and you can try to cite where you heard it, you know, so you're not just throwing stuff and starting more, so I know people aren't starting more rumors and stuff like that just to start more rumors, um, but, you know, it's there to see you guys that are sincere saying, hey, something doesn't seem right, you know, with both of you. Something just doesn't seem right, and you've got some questions, you know. Go on the forum and, and ask those questions, and I'll do my best to answer those questions. Okay. Like I said, I don't know everything that she's been claiming. I do know a few things. I've had brethren come to me and talk to me, and one of the things that she claims is I was married to another woman while married to her, and I was shocked that she'd even do that. I mean... I showed her the divorce paperwork before we got married, that I was single because she was big on that, and I showed her that, and um, she'll just go and talk about it. So I was I was never married to a Korean woman. Okay, I'll say that, um, and I was never married to a woman while married to her. 
Okay. If you have any more questions on that, like I said, you can go to the forum and ask questions on it. I was never married to another woman. She was my wife. She had all my focus and attention. And like I said, I did love my wife. But it got to a point where I had to make a choice. Jesus Christ or my wife. I couldn't have both. She was lost. And brothers and sisters of Christ, no matter what you hear, I've been saying this, no matter what you hear, the first thing I ask you, those who know this ministry and trust this ministry, maybe it'll get her saved. But every time she tries to beat around the bush and she tries to go left or tries to go right, bring it back home to saying, hey, are you still a drunkard? And from my understanding, from witnesses, from family, she's still a drunkard. Okay? She still has a problem with cigarettes. Maybe even weed still. I mean, she was when she was with me, getting high a lot. Okay? What, bring it back to the focus. What destroyed your marriage? Well, it's because he did this. No, no. What destroyed the marriage? You're a drunkard. An, an out of control, raging drunkard. Every night to every other night, when we, there towards the end, she was getting drunk. You disrespected your husband physically and verbally. Right. She got out of control, getting high. That's what destroyed our marriage. None of the other little problems, my mistakes, little mistakes, her other little mistakes. I don't bring up every little mistake she made. Why? Because that didn't destroy our marriage. What destroyed our marriage? She's an alcoholic. Oh, I can't say that. That's the world term. Drunkenness. I almost made it without saying that. <laughs> oh, Victoria's way back there. Gotta wait. She's way back there. Victoria! Sometimes I forget. I gotta stop every so often. No, she was a drunkard and still is. Okay. She destroyed her marriage that by that. And my... Like I said, my prayer for her is that she gets saved. You know, she gets born again. She gives her life to Jesus Christ, truly gives her life to Jesus Christ, where he takes over and cleans up her life. Not this, I can do what I want when I want. Nobody tells me what to do. Okay? But just keep bringing it back to that. If, 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 you, if you really want to help this ministry, don't go under her channels, don't go underneath her videos and just get into fights and arguments and debates and everything with her. Don't do that. Okay. I saw a brother in Christ doing that a little bit. Don't do that. Okay. Just, if anything, you can just bring it back to the main point. Are you still a drunkard? Are you still a drug addict? Cigarettes and weed. Okay. Just keep bringing it back home to the main point. Okay. So that's one of the big things. I was not married to two women at the same time. There towards the end, she was trying to, dis to make up all these excuses to try to find justification to leave me. Because I, she wasn't happy to dwell with me. I would not tolerate her drinking and getting drunk or getting high. Smo chain smoking cigarettes. When she told me before we got married, I don't smoke. She lied. She does smoke. Right? I wouldn't tolerate those sins in, in my home. And I told her that. I told her before we got married. But she was trying to find any and every excuse to justify getting away from me and get a divorce. Get a divorce. She wanted a divorce. So, um, she was just desperately grabbing at straws for that one. Um, one of the other things someone came to me and said, asked me, I said, did you really steal stuff from her? And I was like, I didn't steal anything from her. Right. I just wanted to make that very clear. I didn't steal anything from her. But like I said, it's a he said, she said thing. I can turn around and say, well, she stole some stuff from me. Which she did. But the reason I haven't said it before is because it's a he said, she said thing. And whatever she took isn't worth all this. I got everything replaced that she took. Well, so it's not something to really throw a fit about. But like I said... That's not what destroyed our marriage. Okay, she took things. She did this. She did that. She did all these other little things. That's not what destroyed our marriage. What destroyed the marriage? You come back to the main point. She got drunk all the time. She brought Lady Gaga into the house. Okay, that's, you know, brothers and sisters Christ, that's what it comes down to. And she's going to hate this, but 
she chose Lady Gaga, secular style music, getting drunk and getting and party harding with Lady Gaga on a on the big screen TV, she got on the computer and looked up these videos of hers and would play them really loud. And other secular artists that were just wicked people. And she'd get drunk and she'd get high. And that's what she chose. That's what breaks my heart to this day. She chose that over the husband she claims to love. She chose that. You know? Well, the Bible talks about being lovers of pleasures more than lovers of God. She might have had a little love for me. I, 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 looking back, I'm like, she might have had a little love for me, but she loved her flesh more. She loved her sin more. And when it came down to it and she had to make a choice, that's why the marriage fell apart as far as separation. She couldn't stay here. She couldn't live here anymore. Until she gets her act together, as they say, gets her heart right with the Lord, she can't live here. And I already said this in the marriage study video. Ah, oh, it's just so beautiful out here. I think you can see some of the clouds back there and some of the clouds up there. But, um, like I said in that study, uh, the marriage study for separation. The Bible talks about there's justification for separating. A husband and wife separating. Okay? Not living in the same area. Not separation like they, they're not, they're holding off on the marriage bed for a while. I'm talking about separation where they're not living under the same roof. They're still married, but they're not living under the same roof. Because one of them is lost and out of control. Okay? They're not living a sanctified life. And there's just the whole point of that video is explained to some of the brethren that it's just been weighing heavy on them that some of those people that you look back at your past and the decisions you had to make, you had to choose Jesus Christ over a friend, over a marriage, over family. And you just it just feels bad. It hurts at first. But after a while, God picks you back up, puts you back together, and you have more peace than you did before. You have more joy in your life than you did before. That I mentioned in there, it's like the house. I didn't change anything in the house. I was desperately praying that the Lord would open her eyes and and show her what she had out here, what she was given up out here. The Bible believing, God fearing man that loved her enough to tell the truth to her and stand up to her and say what you're doing is wrong and it's not acceptable in this house. I tried helping her in every way I possibly could. She didn't want help. She made that decision. And I kept the house exactly the way it was for like six months <laughs> after I'd sent her. I, tr I tried to send her back to stay with her mom, but she didn't go to stay with her mom. She went and stayed with the, an ex uh, fiance so she could still party hardy. And her mom knows this. Her mom knows. This. Her mom's patting her on the back right now, and her mom knows her daughter has a problem with alcohol. She's a drunkard. She's a drug addict. She knows this, and she's not showing what true love for her daughter by just ignoring all this. She's not. Right? She's still that way today, and that's what breaks my heart. I just, I kept the house the way it was, praying that, that we could be reconciled, but she'd keep calling me up all the time drunk, middle of the night drunk, lying to me, yelling at me, and it's just, she, she wasn't going to change. And that's, like I said, brother and sister Christ, when it comes down to it, no matter what, someone tries to deflect you, because even the enemies of the ministry, she's given ammunition, not because ammunition as far as truth, but just even if they're, they're lies, a lot of things, like she said, I was married to two women at the same time is what she said. So guess what the enemies of the ministry, the ministry as a whole do? They grab that and say, well, now we can use it against them. See, he's, he was married to two people. He's, he's not worthy to listen to. Don't listen to him see and it's like uh, I just I kept praying and kept praying and I still do to this day that she gets saved that God gives her that hasn't hardened her heart completely her heart hasn't been hardened completely and that God 
put some of the mountains in the background, that God hasn't hardened her heart and given her over to a reprobate mind yet, to give her every opportunity to get saved. She still has an opportunity to get saved. You know, she hasn't rejected the real Jesus Christ and hasn't chosen her flesh so much and her sins so much. The life that she has right now that she claims matters, it doesn't. Her life right now is wicked. But she gets saved. And Lord, and I keep saying, Lord, that's my heartfelt desires that she gets saved. And if anything, in the end, we can be reconciled as brother and sister in Christ. But right now, she's made so many mistakes. She's gotten with another man. She's committed adultery. That's why I did that study, because she'll grab, uh, and a lot of people do this, they'll grab anything and everything, the world's way of saying what's justification for divorce, and they don't go with what the Bible says is justification for divorce. I didn't commit adultery, and at the time she didn't commit adultery. We just couldn't live together under the same roof. It was too violent and too out of control. We couldn't live together under the same roof. It wasn't a divorce. Okay. She chose to get with another guy, and this guy is supposed to be her husband, then it's not her husband, then it's her husband, then it's not her husband, and just some guy she's living with. And it's like I said, she, just, she really needs Jesus Christ. She's so messed up mentally and spiritually, and she's destroying herself physically. Those cigarettes. Uh, I heard from some of the brethren, they're trying to say she dyes her hair, she dyes her hair. I never saw her dye her hair, brothers and sisters of Christ. When she was with me, she didn't dye her hair. What happened was, is I think what's happening is she's smoking cigarettes so hardcore. And I, I talked to some, some sisters in Christ, and they're saying that it can actually affect the way your hair looks. Dries it out and make it look like you're dyeing it or something. You know, And if it's getting so bad, maybe she is dyeing it. To hide that, I don't know, but if I'm saying, I'm just saying she doesn't normally dye it. So I got some people coming, so I need a second. Okay, ran into some neighbors. Um, start walking back home. So I hate when that happens because then you lose your train of thought. But bottom line, brothers and sisters of Christ, like I said, I I was had hoped that we could be reconciled. And bottom line, she kept making choices after choice. She chose another man. She chose another life, and she needs to enjoy that life. But right now, she's just getting on YouTube and just just a lot of hate and bitterness and just attacking anyone and everybody. And, yeah, I just, I pray for her. Just, I know, that some days she'll, oops, almost dropped the phone. Sorry for that, guys. The neighbors are out today. A lot of people are, praise the Lord. It's a beautiful day. So just to round it up, wrap it up, bottom line, I put out a, a forum question and answer. You can ask me questions like as far as she said that you did this and it really bugs you. Don't just ask me, you know, question after question like, you know, but um, that, uh, you know, she actually made a, an accusation against me that just bugs you. Like you just, I try, you know me, you know the ministry. I love the Lord. I love his word. And. I'm all about encouraging the brethren to live a life of Christ and uh, keep your eyes on Jesus Christ, but it still just bugs you. And uh, you can go on that form and say, okay, I heard this. She made this accusation towards you. And um, is it true? Okay. So the two biggest ones that I've answered already is that no, I wasn't married to two people at the same time. That'd make her feel a lot better, right? That she, she got kicked out because of her being a drunkard and a drug addict, but she can hide that. Okay, I'll bring this up, just real quick. So she can hide that. The whole point of her skirting the issues. Oh, he was married to two people at the same time. Oh, he stole from me. Oh, he lies and he does this. It's all to skirt the issue to take the spotlight off of her and put it on anybody else. I mean, she's attacking Brother Brian, putting the spotlight on Brother Brian and trying to keep the spotlight off of her. She was attacking Brother JT at Sinners to Repentance. What's it all about? Taking the spotlight off of her and putting it on everybody else. Because she doesn't want to deal with her sins. The fact that she loves her sins and that she's chosen her sins over Jesus Christ. She doesn't want to get truly saved, born again, because she loves her sin. Okay. 
There's a difference between struggling at first. I had addictions. I know addictions, brothers and sisters of Christ. You and I know addictions. A lot of us have made testimonies. He's doing some work up here, and I'm trying to wait to see if he gets done or something. Because some trees fell down. So I guess we can walk back down here. This video doesn't have to have us go all the way back up to the to the house. I like the walk and the, the beauty. Victoria! Let's get Victoria. Victoria! Let's go! But, um... But yeah, it's just, I understand addiction. You and all of us understand addiction. When we got saved, it was only by, through Jesus Christ, that uh, he got that addiction out of my life. I understand addiction. There's a difference. If she just was struggling with it, brothers and sisters in Christ, and she was fighting it, and she was coming out to me, and, and it's wrong, and I don't want this, and, you know... And she just get drunk, every, you know, once every few months or something like that, because she's letting the Lord get it out of her life, and the Lord will get it out of her life like that. I just think it always gets me when I finally stopped fighting the Lord completely and said, "Listen, you're 100% in charge." He took it out of my life like that. And you have people saying, "Well, I'm trying, but it just doesn't work." Uh, you're not giving your whole life to the Lord. You're still holding on to things you're not supposed to be holding on to. The point of the matter is this. She was justifying her sin, left and right. She loved her sin. She wasn't going to give it up. That's the difference. Brother Jesus Christ, that is the difference. So, we could go on talking, and, and like I said, this isn't a gossip fest, this isn't a bitter fest. Like I said, I'm not here to say, you know, everything she did wrong and, and just say bad things about her and everything. It's just, she's made a lot of claims, and a lot of the claims that I'm hearing brothers and sisters in Christ come to me with, they're false, okay, they're false, um, and, it, and it was on their heart enough to, that they needed to ask me and talk with me about it, and I'm here, so there's the, there's the ministry email, you can email the ministry, or you can go onto that forum and ask questions, okay? and I'll do my best to answer those questions, <laughs> uh, we'll walk further down, he's getting loud, I'll ask those, answer those questions the best I can. Okay. Uh, there were some questions that she asked, and I can't remember them now because they were just are some uh, not that she asked, but that she made some accusations that I was like, "Where did she get that? I can't answer that one. I have no clue where she got that one from." So, um, so yeah, uh, just go along there. Okay. It's a little distracting, but the noise and everything. But uh, yeah, you can just email me or go on the uh, uh, King James Video Ministries and the forums for the brothers and sisters in Christ. That's why I wanted to do it on there, because it's for brothers and sisters in Christ. Um, it's not for the lost world to come and attack and just go crazy and everything. It's for the brethren. Um, if my lost world tries to ask me something about my ex-wife, my first thing would be like, do you know the real Jesus Christ? Have you repented? godly sorrow for your personal sins that you sinned against him and come to Jesus and thrown him at the foot of the cross of Jesus Christ okay. that would be my response to the lost world but to the brethren try not to shake too much to the brethren um, just uh, my prayer has always been it's hard life it's a hard life in these last days to be a Christian it is I mean you could be living in a uh, small apartment and you love the Lord. He's providing for you. You, you're, you're, you could have, be, uh, the Bible talks about, my brain freezes sometimes. Um, with food and raiment, be there with content. Okay. Uh, you can be content and everything, and life could still be hard. I mean, you're living fine. You've got a roof over your head. You're living day to day. And God's watching over you, and you have more than you need, more than you need. But days can still be tough. Why? Because as a Christian in this world, there's times where you stop and you start thinking about all the people you've loved in your life that you've lost. Because you chose Jesus Christ over the world. You chose Jesus Christ over your flesh. I always keep bringing it up. My mom and I used to be best friends and movie buddies. Then I got saved and I cut movies out of my life. Next thing you know, 
we weren't best friends anymore. All we had to hold on to was the movies. That's pretty sad. <coughs> I'm not saying we hate each other. I still go for walks with her on the beach. I try to talk to her about the Lord. So now she doesn't want to hear about it at all. I'm not allowed to talk about the Lord around her. And it's just we got nothing in common. But the point I'm making is, is, is there's a cost to being saved. There's a cost to being a Christian. And in these last days, that cost is great. I, my heart's desire, brothers and sisters, Christ, I don't want to see marriages breaking up. I don't want to see marriages falling apart. One of the dogs from the uh, horse ranch tried to sneak up. I don't want to see people. She's going after Victoria. I always got to pick her up because I don't really trust these dogs that much. We'll start back up the other way. There's Victoria. My heart's desire is not to see marriages break up. That's not my heart's desire. Uh, my heart's desire is not to see families break up. You know, uh, the Bible talks about what Jesus says. I came not to bring a peace, but a sword. I don't want to see a mother at, going at a, a daughter, a daughter going at a mother, or a father going after a son, and a son going after a father, and the family just, you know, turning on each other, you know, betraying one another. I'll put it back down. But the Bible says it's going to happen. Okay? And I'm going to warn you that it's going to happen. There's going to be a lot of things in your life as you go through your life as a saved brother and sister in Christ where you've got to make a choice. Jesus Christ or the world. Jesus Christ or my flesh. And every time, if you're truly born again, every time you've chosen your flesh and fallen flat on your face, Victoria, and falling flat on your face, you regret making that decision, and you turn back to God. Okay, the difference is, lost world, they choose their flesh, and they continue choosing their flesh. There's no regret. They can have worldly sorrow, be sorry for the consequences of their actions, but they don't have any regret or sorrow towards God for that sin or that, de that decision. Right. Um, so... It's tough, brother and sister Christ. I'm praying for you. Please continue to pray for me in this ministry. Uh, right now, I am going through the shelf. I might make a study again on my books because I'm going to be burning a lot of books. I believe that we are getting close to the end. And I have a lot of books that are wicked. Uh, Antichrist Bibles. And I don't want any of that stuff there. You can even put a label there that says uh, Bible Perversions. But they'll read anything and everything that's there. It's better not to have it. Get that Antichrist Bible out of your home so you can get that Antichrist spirit out of your home. Right? It comes to a point where God winks at some of this ignorance. And I know this is talking about the Godhead, but who He is. And you find out that those Bibles are, like the Bible perversions that I have, they're um, Antichrist Bibles. Well, we got to get them out of here. You got Bibles on, you know this wickedness or that wickedness and you were doing a study on it trying to show how wicked it is according to the Bible you did your study get rid of the book we're in the last days and get rid of the books uh, clean up your home as best you can we could be taken up any day now and uh, just keep your eyes on Jesus Christ that's my biggest prayer brother and sister in Christ keep your eyes on Jesus Christ and, a word have I hid in my heart that I might not sin against thee. Keep hiding God's word in your heart. With all supplication, make your, let your request be made known unto God. Keep staying in prayer. Keep giving God thanks in all things and giving Him glory in all things. Make sure that uh, vain imagination, I think one of the biggest things I struggle with, brothers and sisters in Christ, is vain imagination. Hey, stop for a second. I got my sweater on because it was kind of cold this morning, but now it's getting hot. And I'm sweating. Um, yeah, uh, vain imagination is one of the biggest things I, I struggle with. I'll start thinking of something, then next thing you know, I'm thinking of a movie. I'm thinking of a video game. Or I start daydreaming, or would it be like to live like this over here or like that over there? And it's like, you know, there's times where I talk to the Lord and say, what would it have been like to live back in Abraham's day? You know, and you go off the Bible and how they lived, almost dropped it again. And how they lived 
I don't see a big problem with that too much as long as it's just a few minutes and then you're like, okay, let's get back to the real world. But, um, but for the most part with me, it's just one thing starts leading into movies and video games, me start thinking on. I watch them so many times and play them so many times, I don't have to play them to play them. I can play them in my head. That's how bad I was, how addicted I was. I don't have to watch movies. I can watch them in my head. I can go through a whole movie in my head. That's how often I watch these movies over and over and over. That's how addicted I was. I understand addiction. Okay? My biggest prayer for me, brothers and sisters Christ, is vain imagination. That you pray that the Bible says you're supposed to bring every thought into subjection. Okay, Your thoughts are supposed to be pleasing to God. They're supposed to glorify God. That's why the Bible says, Thy word have I hid in my heart. That I might not sin against you. You hide God's word in your heart, and that's what's going to be in your brain. That's what's going to, you're going to be in your thoughts. When your heart is always on God and His word, it's very hard to stray. I don't stray as often as I used to, but I still do every once in a while. And I got to catch myself. So, I don't know if I'll make it all the way to the top videotaping. So, looks like we're going to be stopping it here. But, a few things to get remember, just a summary. Because I'm breathing heavy now. That's probably because I'm hot. And we're going uphill. Coming downhill is easy. Going uphill is hard. Thank you for your prayers. I mean, look. I don't know if it'll do it, but... Behind me. Blue skies. There we go. Blue skies. Thank you for your prayers, brothers and sisters in Christ. Um, thank you, thank you, thank you for your prayers. And God has answered the prayers. And we got clean air. Blue skies. I'm trying to get, going to try to get some work done today. We're supposed to get some rain this week, but right now it's just sun. And um, like I said, when it comes to my ex-wife, I just gave her to God. And those that are that support this ministry, um, please just be careful. Don't get over there and start, you know, getting into backbiting and bitterness and hate and anger. She's joined that group that's all about backbiting and bitterness and hate and anger. And I just pray that God gets her away from that group. I really do. It's the worst thing she could have done is gone to that group. Um, the worst thing you can tell a false convert, worst thing you can tell a false convert is you pat them on the back and tell them that they're a good person and that they're going to heaven when they die. Two worst things you can tell a false convert. I wouldn't tell her that towards the end. I realize that she's a false convert, not because it's my feelings and opinions, but and sisters in Christ, she chose sin over Jesus Christ, mocked his word. Like I said, it's just he said, she said. I said she did it, she'll say she didn't do it. If she got drunk, she would mock God's word. Now, a lot of you can understand that you'd believe it because when you get drunk, your flesh is in charge. You're carnally minded and walking after the flesh and that's what she's it right now. That's the best way to do it. Romans 8, chapter 8. She's carnally minded walking after the flesh. She's not spiritually minded walking after the spirit. That's why I had to get to the point where she's just not saved. Give her to God. If she tries to come and make comments or anything like that on your channels, uh, brothers in Christ that are doing channels and stuff like that, just just link the gospel message to her. Your personal gospel message or gospel message that another brother in Christ did, but the plan of salvation, repentance towards God and faith in our Lord Jesus Christ, confess both in prayer and ask God to save you. And just keep telling her that that alcohol is not worth it. It's not worth her not getting saved. That weed is not worth her not getting saved. Okay, the cigarettes are not worth her not getting saved. They're not worth it. There is no alcohol in hell. There's no weed in hell. There's no cigarette in hell. Okay, all these fleshly pleasures that she's got, they're not there in, pl in hell. Okay, hell is a real place. Okay. So that's wrapping it up. So thank you for your prayers. Thank you for... Uh, the thing with my wife, got a car coming. Victoria! It's the busiest this road's been in a while. Victoria! And then we get smoke in the face. <laughs> when cars come through here, it gets smoke, so I'm going to stand. But uh, you can go to the, you can email me, or you can go to the um, forums at kingjamesvideoministries.org and like I said it's under the question and answers 
Okay, you can ask questions. But like I said, I pray that you understand that if I don't answer a question because it feels like you're attacking, uh, it, there's a difference between saying, did you do this? That's just a question. You did this, and you did that, and, and why would you do such a... In other words, you're saying I did them. You're not coming to ask if I did them. You're already made up your mind, I did them. And you, I'm not going to answer something like that. But if you come to me and say, hey, brother, I heard this, and what's the story behind this? You know, what's the full story, you know? So um, I'll put the link down below to uh, kingjamesvideoministries.org. I'll put the link again down below to um, my uh, apologies to the brethren and warning to the single brethren not to make the mistake I did. Um, and then uh, I just did this study recently about uh, a justification for divorce or separation where the Bible talks about there is justification for a husband and wife to be living separately. And they're not to get remarried. You don't get remarried. I did that in this study. I hope a lot of brethren, there's some people are probably going to start twisting it. It's not justification to get married, remarried. When you're separated, that's not justification for you to run and jump in the bed of another man. You know who you are. Okay? That's not it at all. Okay? Who knows if you'd be reconciled to her husband, talking about the wife that was separated. Okay? You're still married. Okay? But there's justification where you can't live under the same roof. There's circumstances where you cannot live under the same roof. Okay? Jesus has to come first. So, I'll put those links down at the bottom. And uh, so, and then my warning to the brethren, you know, keep your eyes on Jesus. Please, please, out of everything in this video, please heed that call. Keep your eyes on Jesus Christ. That means staying in His Word, hiding His Word in your heart. That means staying in prayer. That means sanctification. Living a life of, of Christ means sanctification. When it says you are in Christ Jesus, our Lord, that's because your old man is dead and buried, and you're raised with Christ. i got a study coming out with this. Uh, you're raised with Christ. And when people take out the changed life, the new man, there is no changed life, there is no ma new man, they are preaching a different gospel because they're, they're with their words, they're double-minded. A double-minded man is unstable in all his ways. They'll say, I believe in the resurrection of Jesus Christ, but then with their words elsewhere, they'll deny the resurrection of Jesus Christ. When you deny the changed life, you're denying the resurrection of Jesus Christ. I found some verses. Paul was warning the Corinthians. When you deny the changed life, you're denying the resurrection of Jesus Christ. Okay? It's that simple. Uh, when, you did, uh, when you throw repentance out and everything, like I said, I'll be working on it. But the point is, is uh, that changed life, that's what it means to be in Christ Jesus. When you're in Christ Jesus, our Lord, unto good works. But the, the infamous Ephesians, um, uh, they read, uh, gosh, the, there's the chapter then 8 and 9, For by grace are you saved through faith, and that not of yourselves is the gift of God, not of works, lest any man should boast. For ye, for ye are created in Christ Jesus unto good works. That's what it means to be created in Christ Jesus unto good works. Victoria, come here. So, I'm going to go ahead and sign out because we're getting a lot of traffic on this road. Come here. So, grace and peace. I'll wait for him to go by. Hello, sir. But, uh, grace and peace. This is, keep your eyes on Jesus. Stay in His Word. Stay in prayer. Continue to give God grace. Uh, give God grace. God gives you grace. Give God glory, starts with a G, and give Him thanks in all things and make sure you're living a life of Christ and you're keeping your eyes on Him. He's coming back any day. Don't take your eyes off of Him or you're going to fall flat on your face. Okay? So I just want to say grace and peace from God our Father and our Lord Jesus Christ be with you all and my love for you which is in Christ Jesus our Lord. Thank you for watching.